So the question is, which one of these words describes you? How can we correct it? How can we see change as we move forward? Now here's the deal. If you're willing to receive this message and ask God to implement it in your life, you will be blessed. If you're willing. And it's never, let me, let me say this too, there's, it's never too late to make, you know, like Emerson Egrich's wife, uh, in love and respect, says you, you can always start over. And you can start in bite-sized pieces. You can, you can make some adjustments, small adjustments that will revolutionize your life. You know, it's been said that you can lead the horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. That's something that I just continue to ask God just to remind me of. As I'm teaching God's word, I, I pray that God uses me to put the trough out there, you know, but we're just a bunch of horses, you know, we're, and I just want to put the, you know, God's word, that, that, the water of his word out and say, come drink, come, come, come hear God's word and just get after it, you know, but you know what? I, I'm not, I don't believe in headlock theology. So I'm not going to come out here and get folks in the headlock and, all right, come up and take a drink right now. I'm not, that's not my deal. I don't think God's nature and his heart is that way. But my prayer today, we would free you to come to the trough and drink. Amen? So are you ready with your sticky notes? You got a pen? If you don't have a pen, find someone that does and grab one. Because number one, what's your first priority in life? Y'all in church, man, I mean, <laughs> come on now. Someone give it to me. God. Hey, what do you know? God, turn to Matthew 7, and let's start building our foundation from the ground up, and let's, let's make sure we know what is number one. And not just saying it, because church folks know, well, yeah, well, it's God, you know. But let's really look at our life and see, really, let's see really what's number one in our life, and let's look at how we can build our life. What's the foundation? Matthew 7, verse 24. Let's take a look here. Matthew 7, 24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, see you're starting to hear God's word, and does them, I will liken to him, liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Right? That Jesus Christ, that rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, here it is, for it was founded on the rock. You see that? It was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, ah, uh, yeah, whatever, preacher guy, bald guy, you, you don't know what you're talking about, will be a, like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Just like this video here. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. Pause right there. Number one in your priority list, praise God, is God. A personal, intimate love relationship with God. You, I've said this, and I'll continue to say the same thing. You'll be like, dude, like, think of something else to say, okay? But I'm a, I'm a caveman, so I'm going to continue to reiterate that I believe in, in repetitive learning. God has created you for a, for a love relationship with Him. Ecclesiastes 3.11. He said he's, he's placed eternity in your hearts. You have a God-shaped hole of thirst for God in your heart from day one. He, he, he created in that. He, right? You're pre-programmed. And until you actually say, okay, that's where I start, you will continue to fumble through life. It's the bottom line. I had lunch with a great friend of mine, and we debated. I love hanging out with this guy because he's a... Uh, He's not a believer, and we, we have these really interesting discussions. And we'll talk about, well, what about this, and what about that, and all these world problems and everything, and we'll always get back to the same thing. Dude, it starts with a relationship with Jesus Christ. Until you take that step of faith, all these other conversations, all these other things, they're going to be meaningless. It starts right there. I love casting crowns and how they put these videos, this American Dream video out there. It's great to see a picture of what happens when this man's foundation was not built on God. His foundation was built on just. And now, wasn't the guy? Was, do you think that guy was like a bad guy? Homie was getting after it. He was. I mean, there's nothing wrong with working. We're gonna get to that when we talk about your job or your career. It's a great thing. But he was. He was. He was going around. He wasn't building that foundation. Think about this. You're having a house built. And for some reason, then you know, you're, you're looking for them to have, you know, the, the concrete poured, the foundation built, and they just, they just show up and they, 
Next thing you know, they got a big thing, a truck of sand. You know, just gonna, oh, dude, we'll cut some costs here. I know you guys are looking to, you know, be budget conscious. We'll just bring some sand instead. Well, we'll just throw it together. Well, what's gonna happen? I mean, you might have a, I mean, especially in our country, you have a tornado rip through there and you're, you're done dealing. The foundation is set. It is, it is founded upon the rock of Jesus Christ. Until you get there, my friends, you will fumble through life. It's just the way God has created us. So it starts there. Here's the deal. Um, some of us in here are walking through that tragedy. We can see that right now. We can see it. We can see the fruit of our, of our choices. We can, fruit, we can see the fruit of where we put our, our foundation. And it's a, it's a tragic thing. It's a tragic thing. So it's built on the rock. You know, you heard the old, you know, what is it, an old hymn on Christ, the solid rock I stand? All other ground is sinking sand. All other, I can't see. Someone, someone. Sabrina, get up here. You're looking so on Christ the solid rock I stand. Everything else, man, it's sinking sand. It doesn't matter what you're, you're trying to put there. It, it could be your career. It could be your notoriety. It could be, you know, th this money, the pleasure. All these things, man, they're going to come crashing down. It's shifting sand. Here's the thing. That, there might be a season of life where it's great. Dude, I don't need God. I, it's, I'm, it's all good, man. I got, I got lots of cash in my pocket. You know, I'm driving a, uh, what was that car last night we saw? Bentley convertible, you know, I mean, uh, it's all good to me. Oh, God, this. I'm telling you, man, the foundation, you're, you're walking on sinking sand. The Bible says, no takers, Matthew 6.33. You can even put this under number one, God. You can put Matthew 6.33 if you want. And, and memorize this verse, and it will save you from heartache and despair. Trust me. I've been there. I've walked through trying to place my foundation elsewhere. Matthew 6, 33, seek first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these other things will be added unto you. So we start with the foundation, we seek God first, and then build up from there with these others, two, three, four, five, and six. Seek first. And Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 talks about uh, giving to God, and it says, honor the Lord with your possession, and, be, and with the first fruits of all your increase. And here's the thing, a lot, a lot, I'll meet with pe person after person with financial counseling. And you know, one of the privileges I had in Fort Lauderdale was to oversee the benevolence counseling. So when people had tough times financially, I was the guy that they would sit with and I would you know, talk to them. And, and I would, I'd always ask them, well, how, how's your tithing, man? How, how you giving? And they'd be like, what's that mean? I don't tithe. And here's the thing, they, the Bible says give the first your increase to the Lord, and then now listen to the end of this verse. So that your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. And so, but I, but me, I'm going, okay, I made this money, and my first thing, I'm gonna I'm gonna pay my mortgage. That's my first, my first outtake is the mortgage. Then my second thing is OPBD, OPBD, and, you, and, and well then I got the kids' tuition. Then there's nothing left. You expect me to give to God? Wait, hold on, man. He says first. Here's the cool thing. We've been challenged years ago in this, and there would be times, literally, I'm not lying, where we'd honor God first, we'd say, God, I don't have no idea how we're gonna be able to pay this and that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna just trust. And we'd get, and this is no lie, we'd have, at the end of the month, we'd be, I don't know how, I don't know what's gonna go on, there'd be an envelope with my name spelled wrong, with 200 bucks cash in it, in, on my door. And I'm like, you know, recently a young man at our church got saved, and he, uh, just a few days ago, he was, he was down to his last five bucks, and he, was, he needed gas money to go do a job, and he's, he's just in utter despair. He's at this job site, and he's just, he's on the, on the uh, there was like some lawn chairs out there, he's taking his break, and he's just praying, and he's looking up at the sky, he's like, I, don't, I just don't know what to do, Lord. And next thing you know, he closes his eyes, and he's looking at the sky, he closes his eyes, and the man, at the job site, this house that he was building the deck, comes out as he's, he opens his eyes and this old, like, you know, 85-year-old dude has a $20 bill in his hand and he says, hey man, you're doing a great job. Why don't you move yourself some gum and a pop real quick, man. This dude is, huh? Now, can you imagine that as a new believer? You're just putting